I have linked below what may be, to some people, it is to me, perhaps the most disturbing scene in motion picture history. Um, it was included in the movie that it was included in for a reason, and that reason was, I suppose, to get us to analyze the tendencies that the entire movie was trying to portray. And the best way to do that, I guess, uh, that uh, Stanley Kubrick thought would be to grab us by the hair and force us to stare right into the face of that aspect of human existence that he wanted to portray. I refer, of course, to the assault scene, the rape scene, the break-in scene from Clockwork Orange. It was a deliberately horrific scene. Uh, as I say, it's probably, well, at least to me, the most disturbing scene in any movie ever, or at least the most disturbing I've ever seen. Um, watch at your own peril, <laughs> and at your own risk, and your own discretion. Now, there are several interesting, well, more than several, there are hundreds of angles uh, in which this scene can be analyzed. The one that I'm interested in here is the experiential. Now, there are six people, at least in the movie, involved in experiencing what takes place. There is the, <laughs> weirdly named, but I think accurately, uh, at least movie-wise, uh, entitled protagonist. There's Alex. There's his three droogs. There is the primary victim, the woman. And there is the secondary victim, the man. From those four perspectives, how is that event experienced? Alex experiences it one way. How does he experience it? Um, his three droogs experience it somehow. How do they experience it? The victim, the woman, the primary victim, the one to whom the most truly shocking, disturbing, and terrifying, and peace of mind crushing things happen. How does she experience it? How does the man, I think it's her husband, experience it when he has to watch these things happen to her and watch other people watching it, presumably for pleasure? How does he experience all of that? Finally, to throw in another angle, how does the viewer experience it? There's any number of ways one can answer that. Any number of ways one can answer any of those questions that I've posed. What I refer to is the fact that every human being that has ever existed is the only one that is capable of experiencing his or her own experiences. And that everyone else's, or everyone, everyone's experience of the same event is going to be completely different. It's like comparing the experience of the rapist to the victim. There's two parties to this. One is experiencing things one way, the other person is experiencing things another way. It looks to me, although I've never been raped and I've never raped anyone, but it looks to me as though the two points of view, the two experiences, are irreconcilable, that they are so radically different. We can't experience what someone else experiences, and that's why there are limits to empathy. Now, I understand what I'm going to get here. It's the usual barrage of personal attacks, guilt, and scapegoating, condemnation, um, sandbagging, whatever. Bring it on, I don't care. I, I've anticipated all of that, and I think we know who I'm referring to here, who's going to do all that, because that's all that ever happens in, these, in the sort of videos that he makes. 
Moral indignation and guilt and denunciation aside, the fact remains. Experientially, each of us is alone.